Hi, my name is Tommy Chen from Hong Kong. Today I'm going to talk about the use of Pedicam and Corvus ST in corneal refractive surgery. We all don't want this to occur. This is the cornea tasia. It is one of the most devastating complications after corneal refractive surgery and it can occur at any time. And studies have shown that abnormal preoperative topography is the most significant risk factor for developing cornea tasia. Keratoconus is one of the examples of cornea tasia, and posterior corneal and pachymetric changes are present as the earliest topographical sign in keratoconus. And the rotating strong flux imaging, such as a panacam, can provide very useful information on the base of topographic data for the diagnosis of these earlier attentive changes. The advantage of a panda cam is that it can show the anterior and posterior cornea surface clearly and it can also generate a full pachymetric map of the cornea. The panda cam has a topometric display which comprises of several indexes and a keratoconus classification. The panda cam also has a very powerful tool in diagnosing keratoconus or cornea tasia, which is the BAD, the Berlin and Biroso display which is shown here. The first two indices of the BAD actually measure the elevation profile of the anterior and posterior cornea surfaces. We fit the cornea with a sphere called the Bechtel sphere and measure how much the cornea is above and how much is below the Bechtel sphere. The panda cam also calculates the corneal thickness spatial profile. It shows the relationship between central and peripheral cornea to show any pathological thinness. In the calculation, it fits multiple concentric ring center at the uh, thinness point of the cornea and measure the change in corneal thickness along those rings. It also measures the ambrosial relational thickness the ART it is actually the relation between the finite spawn and also the pachymetric progression indexes that we just mentioned. And the ART is a novel combined parameter. It reports to have a very high sensitivity and specificity in discriminating keratoconus from a normal cornea. So this slide summarizes the BAD. The left column shows the elevation profile of the anterior cornea. And the column next to it shows the elevation profile of the posterior cornea. And the two red lines show the pachymetric progression index the, or the profile. And uh, lastly, at the very bottom, those are uh, five parameters and the final D values. This slide shows the five parameters and the final D values of the BAD. The DF shows the deviation of the front elevation profile and the DB is the deviation of the back elevation profile and DP is the deviation of the pachymetric progressions and DT is the deviation of the minimal thickness and DA is deviation of the ART max and finally the D value is the total deviation values. So those values are represented in colors if it is less than 1.6 standard deviation from the normal population, it will be white in color. And if it is between 1.6 and 2.6 standard deviation from the normal population, it will indicate as a yellow color. And if it is more than 2.6 standard deviation, it is red in color and means it is a pathological finding. In the literature, Actually, it showed that the ART max and the final D values of the BAD has an AV under curve of more than 0.95 in diagnosing keratoconus and also an AUC of 0.92 in detecting subclinical cases. And the final D values actually has a 89% of sensitivity for subclinical keratoconus. And in another study, it demonstrated that the final D values of the BAD had 100% of sensitivity and specificity in differentiating keratoconus from normal eye with a cutoff point of 2.1. However, using a lower cutoff point, the sensitivity and specificity drop in case with, uh, with subclinical keratoconus. So how about cases of form first keratoconus? 
From first keratoconus is actually defined as the cornea that has no abnormal clinical and corneal topographical findings with the fatal eyes of a clinical keratoconus. So they have shown that the top, some topometric index, the IVA and IHD, were significantly different between normal and fatal eyes of urinary keratoconus patient, but not the BAD and the ART. We previously performed a study and find that the final d-value of the BAD has an area under curve of 0.76 for detecting from Fox keratoconus with a sensitivity of 53% and specificity of 80%. From the previous slide, we can see that the sensitivity of diagnosing from Fox keratoconus is not high using the corneal uh, topometrical or topographical methods. And so here we would like to see if other properties such as corneal biomechanical properties aid in the diagnosis of form force keratoconus. Here we have the core versus ST, which stands for the corneal visualization from frog technology. It is actually a long contact tolometer which should an uh, symmetrically measure metered air path to the cornea and measure the change in corneal shape uh, using the strong camera. So it is a relatively new uh, commercially available imaging device capable of monitoring the biomechanical response of the cornea. So it actually can aim to quantify the corneal biomechanical changes in normal cornea as well as abnormal or atelic cornea. The corneal dynamic response actually has different phases. The first appanation phase, the highest concavity phase, and also the second appanation phase. And there are a lot of different parameters developed, and one of the most important ones is called the deformation amplitude. Studies have shown that deformation amplitude had the highest every under curve among corpus parameter for differentiating keratoconus from normal cornea. The AUC for deformation amplitude was 0.82 with a sensitivity of 82% and a specificity of 83%. Another study also report an every under curve of 0.840 for deformation amplitude and a higher every under curve of 0.942 for diffraction Amateur in differentiating keratoconus from normal. The difference between deformation and diffraction is that deformation includes the whole eye movement while diffraction has the whole eye movement removed from the waveform. It is important to note that uh, the cornea dynamic response will be affected by the cornea thickness and the intraocular pressure. Therefore, all of us have tried to match those two confounding factors when calculating the AUC of uh, deformation amplitude in differentiating keratoconus from normal. And a study have shown an AUC of 0 0.77, and another study have reported an AUC of 0 0.775, which are similar. From the previous slides, the area under curve of diagnosing keratoconus from normal in various studies range from 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. And here we use a new COVID software system and identify some normal parameter. And we find that the DA ratio 2 and DA ratio 1 as a very high area under curve are in discriminating keratoconus and normal. And we also find that the diagnostic ability of uh, this novel parameter on Corvus was comparable to the Pentacam BAD. In this table, you can see that there is no significant difference between these novel Corvus parameter and the BAD in discriminating keratoconus from normal cornea. Apart from measuring the corneal dynamic response, the Corvus can also measure the intraocular pressure. And it actually has a new parameter called the BIOP, which are the IOP estimates significantly less affected by cornea parameters and given as a function of measure intraocular pressure, cornea thickness, and age of the patient. So this graph actually shows the difference between the IOP measured before and after LASIK. We all know that um, after LASIK, the cornea becomes thinner, and this will underestimate the intraocular pressure. And in this graph, you can see the BIOP affect uh, less by the cornea thickness, which is the green bar showing there, which is very close to zero. 
whereas other measurements had showed uh, a very wide range of intraocular, intraocular pressure changes. And there is another uh, novel parameter of the corpus called the stiffness parameter, and it is a new stiffness parameter defined as the resultant pressure at the inward appellation divided by the corneal displacement. You can see from the equation that it incorporates the BILP that we just mentioned. So you can see from this graph uh, showing that the stiffness parameter actually decreases after uh, LASIK. And this is very obvious because in LASIK you weaken the cornea, so therefore the stiffness of the cornea drops. Similar to the BAD, the Vincent Kruger screening report uh, is a screening tool uh, for the biomechanical properties of the cornea. It uses uh, different corneal dynamic response and generate a single uh, index called the CBI, the Corpus Biomechanical Index. So this is the Vincent Kruger screening report. It showed the normal ranges of different corneal dynamic response, and the CBI actually uh, is showed here, and also the uh, different parameter incorporated into the calculation of CBI, such as the DA ratio, the HC radius, the ARTH, and also the stiffness parameter that we just mentioned. So in this figure, actually it showed that um, the four parameters that incorporate into the CBI, which is the DA ratio, the integrated radius, the ARTH, and the SBA1, and it showed that uh, higher indexes indicate a, uh, for the first two, indicate a soft cornea, and the lower indexes for the uh, ARTH and SBA1 will indicate a soft cornea. In the literature, Vincent Kruger groups report a CBI has the ability to detect keratoconus with an AUC of 0 0.990. And in our study, we also find a very high AUC of 0 0.971 when using the CBI in differentiating normal from keratoconus. How about uh, using the CBI in differentiating from keratoconus uh, from normal cornea? Previously, we performed a, a comparative study between corneal dynamic and tomographic analysis in form of keratoconus and showed similar diagnostic efficiency between corpus CVI and pentacam BAD or the ART Max in differentiating form for keratoconus from normal. And comparable AUC was observed between the CVI and the BAD for detection of form for keratoconus with a sensitivity of 63 and 53% with a common specificity of 80%. And you can see here the AUC is around 0.7 to 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Uh, and this is the ROC curve for the Panacam and the Corvus parameter. And on the left hand side, you can see uh, it is a comparison between keratoconus from normal and the CBI and the BAD actually perform quite well. And for on the right hand side is the curve for differentiating from Fox keratoconus from normal, and you can see that uh, it show um, the AUC is not that high, and uh, it showed the sensitivity is sixty three point two percent and fifty two point six percent for these two parameters. So if we want to look at the big picture, maybe we can combine the two, the tomography and also the corneal biomechanical properties so that we can know better about the cornea. In the past, we can use uh, keratoscopy and CLM examination for screening of keratoconus or atasia. And right now, most people are using topography and tomography in uh, screening for these cases. And right now, or in the future, Actually, we can, mesh use, we can make use of the tomography and also the biomechanical properties of the cornea in differentiating cornea atasia or keratoconus. And the pentacam actually has uh, this feature, which is called the TBI, the Topographical Biomechanical Index. It is a combination of the cornea tomography, which is the BAD, and also the biomechanical uh, response of the cornea, which is the CBI. 
So in this example uh, of a unilateral keratoconus, you can see the left eye has uh, features of keratoconus, while the right eye doesn't have any topographical features of keratoconus. So for the right eye, you can see the BAD is still within the normal range. However, for the CVI, it is around 0.94, which is uh, very high. And therefore, the combined TBI is very high, which is 0.89. So this shows that the right eye actually has some abnormal uh, biomechanical response, uh, although it has a very uh, normal uh, topometrical uh, features. There is a recent fabrication of using the TBI in differentiating keratoconus from normal and also from box keratoconus from normal. On the left graph, you can see the uh, TBI has a very high uh, area under curve uh, for differentiating keratoconus from normal. And we want to focus on the right, the graph on the right hand side, which shows a TB that the TBI also has a very high area under curve in differentiating from Fox cubital corners from our normal cornea while the CVI and also the BAD um, does not perform so well and according to our preliminary result we also show a very similar uh, findings and on the left hand side you can see uh, an AUC of 494 in differentiating cubital corners from normal and on the right hand side, you can see the TBI has a has an AUC of 0.969 in differentiating from Fox keratoconus from normal cornea. So let me give you an example. This is uh, one of my patients coming for uh, refractive surgery, and you can see the uh, cornea looks normal. You can see that this patient BAD is normal apart from a uh, slightly uh, suspicious anterior cornea surface. When we measure the cornea dynamic response, um, you can see the DA ratio, the integrated radius, and also the SBA1 is quite high, therefore the CBI is uh, 0.6, which is quite high. And we look at the TBI of this patient, it has a TBI of 0.62, which is uh, quite high. So therefore, in this patient, I did not uh, suggest uh, we call it refractive surgery for this patient. So this is the TBI for another patient and you can see the BAD, CBI and TBI are all quite normal. So this is the TBI of the fellow eye of the same patient and you can see the BAD is normal, the CBI is uh, in the middle and the TBI is Normal, so therefore, this patient I will suggest him to under to have the uh, cornea refractive surgery. It is important to note that the contribution of CVI to worst TBI and BAD to worst TBI are not linear. The CBI has a wider range uh, to become abnormal, so that it will reflect on the TBI. On the other hand, for the BAD, uh, it predominantly affect the TBI uh, from normal to abnormal ranges. Currently in the CUHK Refractive Surgery Center, I am using the Panacam and Corvus ST and the TBI for my refractive surgery screening. And I believe that it will become a, a more popular tools in the future. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.